Sometimes, people ask me how they can find the photography style. I believe there's no easy answer to that, and there's no shortcut to getting there. Discovering my photography style was one of the toughest challenges, because I actually enjoy photography many different things. So it took me quite a while to develop a consistent look and feel, and I struggled to explain what my style was. But let me try to distill my thoughts on what I believe a style is made of, and how you can possibly find your way to yours. Hi everyone, my name is Shamin, and if you're new here, on this channel I talk about photography, gear, and some lifestyle content. First, I like to think of photography in five aspects, and that is genre, setting, details, lighting and mood, and editing. When you make a deliberate and consistent choice in these five aspects, you eventually end up with a style of your own. First, let's talk about genre. It's the first thing that differentiates you from others, but basically it's what you like to photograph. You can do portraits, food, landscape, pet, lifestyle, wedding, street, fashion, and so on. And even under broad categories like portraits, you have other niches like family portraits, wedding portraits, or even just headshots. I don't really specialize in a niche area like portraits of food, and I do all of that, but with a lifestyle angle. So I'll say I do mainly lifestyle and reportage style photography, as I like to capture moments that are authentic and real. So even if it's staged, I try to photograph it in a way that feels organic. Next, we move on to setting. And this is essentially where you like to take your photos. So do you like taking photos in a studio? Or do you like taking photos on location? And by on location, you can be outdoors with nature or in an urban setting with lots of building and architecture or just where the action is happening, like in a cafe or a bookstore. My favorite place to photograph is definitely on location because I like capturing real moments. So real settings are my jam, especially with nature. Let's go on to details, which is essentially how elaborate or simple you like your setup to be. Do you like using props and decor? If you're shooting with models, do they have heavy styling and makeup, like what you see in fashion shoots? Or do you go for a more simple and minimal look? When I talk about details, most people would think of a studio setting with decor and props, but you can also have details when you are shooting outdoors. For example, if you're doing a portrait outdoors, is it more of a headshot with a shallow depth of field? where our background is mostly blurred, that would be simple. Or is it more of an environmental portrait, where you include the surroundings or even props like a picnic setup for a family shoot? This would be more detailed and elaborate. I'm definitely more of an environmental portrait person. I like including the surroundings of my subject because it gives the photo context and it injects some storytelling that gives the photo an additional layer of complexity. Next, we have lighting and mood. Lighting can dramatically change the mood of your photos, and since photography is all about light, how you capture light or how you like to light your scene plays a very big part in your style. Let's talk about hard light and soft light. The difference between hard and soft light is that for hard light, you have very distinct and sharp shadows with little or no gradient between the light and the shadow parts. Hard light usually gives you a more dark, dramatic or moody view, whereas for soft light, you have soft shadows with gradient between the light and shadow areas. And there is this bright, airy look to it that often creates a very cheery or calming atmosphere. There are two ways to light your scene, either the use of strobes or natural light. So when I talk about natural light, most people think about soft light, but it's possible to get hard light with natural light. And it really depends on the time of day that you're shooting and how the light hits your subject. Strobes and natural light can give off very different vibes. I actually use natural light 90% of the time, but sometimes due to weather or like the location, I have to use strobes. But even when I do, I try as much as possible to shape the light to look like natural light. And of course, sometimes a photographer can have a preferred light pattern that they use often. And by light pattern, I mean the light direction. I actually enjoy using backlight, and I use that a lot. So sometimes while shooting for my clients, they will ask if it's okay that the light is behind them. And I understand their concern because they can't see my screen, but I know when it works and when it doesn't. Having said all this about light, it's important to note that photographers don't only stick to one type of lighting. It really depends on what we are shooting, what we want to achieve, and even the weather and the environment at the location. But in general, there is a type of lighting or mood that would dominate a photographer's work, and that would be considered part of the photographer's style. If you're enjoying this video so far, do leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more photography content like this.
And finally, we have the editing stage. I believe that when it comes to style, editing is as important as the actual photography itself, if not even more. Think of a photographer or an artist that you admire, and you'll notice that their work actually has a consistent colour throughout. And it's at this stage that your style really comes through. From the colour temperature, to the tint, the contrast, and even how saturated your colours are, it's not possible to talk about style without talking about colour. So think about this. Do you like your photos in colour or black and white? If you like your photos in colour, how saturated do you like them to be? Do you like the colours to pop? Or do you like it to be more muted? Do you like your photos to have a warmer or cooler tone? Do you turn up your contrast a great deal? Or do you like it to be more subtle? I like colours, so I hardly do black and white photography. And I like my colours to be more muted. My photos also tend to have a cooler tone, with more green and cyan tint in them. You probably won't know what you like if you haven't done much editing, or if you mainly shoot straight out of camera JPEGs. So, if you want to develop a style of your own, it's a good idea to start shooting in RAW and practice editing and colour grading. Now that we know what makes up a style, let's see how you can find yours. Firstly, you need to have an idea of what you like. And I feel that the best way to do this is to assemble a mood board of photos. And you can do this on Pinterest, on Instagram, or any other social media platforms. Just save all the photos that you like. Once you've done that, study all the photos that you've saved. This could be by the photographers you admire or just random photos that you've come across. Write them down and categorize them according to the points above. Why do you like these photos? What do they have in common? What's the setting like? Are they elaborate or simple? How's the lighting and mood? Do the photos have a warmer or cooler tone? And thirdly, reference and practice. By reference, I don't mean to copy other people's work, but rather apply what you've studied into your practice. So maybe the photographer you admire uses a lot of hard light. Try that in your photos. Sometimes you may like one photographer for his, his or her photography, but you prefer another photographer's editing style. For example, you may like photographer's A lighting pattern, but you like the colours and tones of photographer B's photos. Photographer A shoots portraits, and you're into portraits. But photographer B shoots food. So is it okay to reference work that are different from the genre of photography that you do? Of course! If you can learn how to light like photographer A, and apply photographer B's edit into your work, you may just end up with a style of your own. In fact, if there are other artists that you admire as well, such as cinematographers, graphic designers, or even anime artists, that's even better. Because you can usually learn something different from other art forms that you can apply to your photography work. You can learn different types of lighting from films. You can learn how to weave more storytelling into your shots. And if you're into design or anime, you may probably be better than most photographers at using colour. So after months and years of practice, when you've taken enough photos, edited a whole lot of bad ones, you'll eventually reach a point where you don't have to reference other people's work anymore. You will know what you like and you can just go with your gut. And when you finally reach this point, your work will feel like yours and you have developed a style of your own. Thanks for sticking around and see you in the next one.